In this video, we'll make the daisy sing. Let's get started. Hi, this is Takumi from Electrosmith. Now that you can flash a program to the daisy, I'm sure you're eager to start making some sounds. Well, we'll be doing exactly that in this video. The main goal of this video is to familiarize ourselves with connecting components such as an audio jack to the daisy. And we'll also look at the daisy DSP code for the first time. By the end of this video, we'll play an oscillator sound out of the daisy. And we'll also input sound from an external audio source like this Roland S1 that I have here and do something fun with it. We'll be splitting this video into two major sections, electronics and software. Okay, let's get started. The DC seat has two audio out pins that we can connect audio jacks to. These are the same pins that are used for DAISY boards like the pod and field. So if you're using those, you can skip to this timestamp. By connecting an audio jack, we can send the C's output to an audio interface with an audio cable. First, let's make sure we have everything we need for this video. Here's a list. DAISY seed, USB cable, computer, audio jacks, breadboard, jumper wires, audio cables, and audio equipment of choice, such as an audio interface or even a guitar amp. I'll put a list of places where you can get these in the description below. We recommend that you use an audio jack that can be inserted directly into the breadboard. With these, we'll be able to avoid soldering for this video. And for the audio input section, you can use a hardware synth like the Roland S1 or even a smartphone. And one optional item for this video is a portable USB battery like this, which we'll talk about later. Okay, we'll start learning about electronics basics as we connect audio jacks to the daisy seed right now. Let's insert the daisy seed into a breadboard. This will allow us to connect components such as an audio jack to the daisy with ease. We recommend that you use a standard sized breadboard like this one, since we're going to continue adding components in upcoming videos. Let's insert the daisy in this orientation, and we'll see why in a minute, aside from the fact that we can't really do it in this orientation. I suggest connecting these header pins on the upper side to row G, and the rightmost header pin is connected to column 61. Next, let's insert the audio jack to the breadboard in this orientation. The leftmost pin is connected to column 29, row H, and the rightmost pin is connected to column 33 on the same row. Okay, these two components are not connected together just yet. So how do we connect them? Well, let's learn how breadboards work. So breadboards have a bunch of columns like these, and each column is isolated from each other. And whatever that's connected to a certain column, Components inserted into the other sockets of that same column will be electrically shared. And we can bridge two separate columns together by using a jumper wire, which is exactly what we'll be doing when we connect the audio jack to the daisy. By the way, these two columns are isolated from each other. This is why we were able to insert the daisy C to the breadboard without the two sets of header pins being connected. It would have short circuited otherwise. Okay, let's connect the jack's pins to the daisy by bridging separate columns together. So this pin on the jack is called a tip, which will be connected to one of the two daisy's audio out pins. So let's grab an orange jumper wire and connect to column 44, which has the audio out one signal flowing. So inserting one end of the wire to any of these sockets will work. And connect the other end of the wire to column 33, where the tip is connected to. And now, the daisy's audio out one and the jack's tip are connected together. In order to complete the circuit, we need to connect the jack to a ground. So this pin on the jack is called a sleeve, which we need to connect to the daisy's ground. Because we'll need the ground for multiple components, such as the input jack later in this video, it'll be helpful and tidier to use this ground rail. So when we use a black wire to connect the ground rail to column 42 that has the daisy's ground connected, we now have a whole row that has a shared ground. 
We'll be doing something similar with power in the next video. Okay, now we can grab another black jumper wire and insert one end to the ground rail. So inserting it to any of these sockets will work. And connect the other end of the wire to column 29, where sleep is connected to. And that's it! So we can grab an audio cable and connect to an audio interface. And while we're at it, let's connect another jack to one of the DAISY's input pin. Already connected the input jack here. The tip is connected to column 40, row H. Sleeve is connected to column 36 on the same row. So similar process. We need to connect the jack's tip to the DAISY's audio in one pin, which is column 46. And the jack's sleeve is connected to the ground rail. See how the ground rail makes our circuit look cleaner? And we're complete with the electronics section. Okay, let's make the daisy sync by outputting a simple sine wave sound. Let's look at an oscillator code made in daisy duino, which you can download from a link in the description. We'll break this code down to get the general idea of a typical DSB code structure. We won't dive too deep into all the DSP concepts in this video, such as block size, but we will cover them once we start our DSP programming tutorial series. Okay, let's start by looking at this portion of the code where we're initializing the DAISY hardware and oscillator module. And we'll scroll down to here, where the DAISY is initialized at 48kHz sample rate, number of channels is set up, and etc. These sections should look very much similar between other DSP codes that we'll cover. The next section is where we can actually change stuff around. We see the initial oscillator parameters such as wave type, frequency, and amplitude. If, for example, we change this 440 to 880, we will get an oscillator that's higher by an octave. But we'll keep it at 440 for now. And this DAISY began my callback is what starts the audio engine that allows us to start making some sound. Let's have a closer look at this my callback up here. Pretty much all we need to know for today is that this portion of the code is required for the sound to go out from the hardware audio out pins. The oscillator's process function synthesizes the sound signal and then output that sound using out. All right, let's flash it to the daisy. And don't forget to put the daisy into bootloader mode. Just as a refresher, we need to put the daisy into bootloader mode before we can flash a program. So press and hold the boot button, press and hold the reset button, let go of reset, and finally let go of boot. And hit upload. And now we should hear sound. Awesome, success. Let's change the pitch by modifying the frequency parameter here to A80. And flash again. Now, some of you may hear a noise in the signal. And it's caused by the computer's USB power. This is where having an external power source like a portable battery will come in handy. So once we have a synth that we're happy with, powering the DAISY with a USB battery like this is recommended. We can also power the DAISY using the VM pin, but that needs to be a whole video on its own. What we're going to do next is to input sound from an external audio source, like the Roland S1 that I have here. So we can simply connect the output of the synth directly to the input jack that's connected to the DAISY. What we need to keep in mind is that the DAISY seed expects a line level signal. You may have heard of line level signal and instrument level signal when working with an audio interface. 
So guitar, for example, outputs an instrument level signal, which is much quieter than the line level signal that most hardware synthesizers output. So if we wanted to use guitar with the daisy, we need to amplify the signal, which we'll learn how to in a future video. Adding input to our code is super easy. First, let's comment out the oscillator here from earlier. And we can simply add in bracket zero bracket i to directly output our input synth signal out of our daisy. Let's flash and see if it worked. Nice. Okay, now we can do something fun. Let's bring back that oscillator from earlier and add a multiplication symbol in between like this. And let's change the oscillator frequency to 100. Okay, let's flash this and see what happens. Sounds funky, right? It's more metallic and dissonant. By multiplying the sin signal with a 100Hz sine signal, we implemented a type of amplitude modulation called a ring modulation. Even with very little code, we were able to do some interesting stuff. Now that we can play sounds out of our daisy, what's next? While we were able to change the pitch of an oscillator by altering the frequency parameter, it was kind of tedious having to flash every time, right? What if we could twist the knob and change the pitch of an oscillator in real time? Well, we'll be doing exactly that in the next video. In the meantime, I recommend exploring the example codes now that we can output sounds. And please feel free to share your experiment on the DAISY forum or Discord. I look forward to checking them out. Okay, thank you for watching and have fun.